Sea turtle populations usually stay quite local. They do show some migration north and south. But if they're born on this beach, invariably they're going to come back to this region when they're ready to nest. So in Turangana, it used to be a great area for seeing sea turtles. The extensive turtle poaching and consumption of turtle eggs has really decreased those populations. Once these species are on the decline or once we lose them in this area completely, um, basically they're not going to come back um, or it's going to take thousands of years for them to come back for this region. Tanjong Jara project where we are now with the hatcheries that started in 2016. As we were running the hatcheries we, we started to realise that maybe there was some things that could be improved. So I got back in contact with Richard Rayner from Monash. Eventually turned into the idea of looking at the effects of moisture on sea turtle, um, hatchling fitness and success. Bill's project is a really interesting one and especially there's not, not very much at all known about moisture. And so his study here is a really good opportunity to learn more so that we can then understand the reproductive success of a population as a whole and use that information to understand um, for global populations because the biology is essentially the same. So when we bury 10 of the nests we're actually putting in temperature sensors. This is really important because during the middle third phase of incubation uh, the temperature of the nest actually affects whether the hatchlings are male or female. On top of the temperature we're also looking at um, spatial orientation of the eggs. Uh, so when we're burying them, we're um, numbering each egg uh, as we place it into the nest to build a 3D model. So when those nests hatch, we'll then collect up all the eggs that didn't survive. And we can see if regions of the nest had better survival chances than others, uh, which could tell us really important things about other environmental variables, such as oxygen, because this can be something that really affects the success rate. Being here as an intern, I feel very honoured to be here. Um, it is a fantastic opportunity for someone like me. Anyone who is really interested in conservation and ecology should definitely apply and you might find yourself here one day doing what I'm doing. So far it's my first week over here and I find it very exciting. It's been very eventful and I get to witness mother turtle lay her eggs and I get to touch turtle eggs, which is a rare opportunity that most people can't have it. So after we've measured all of the hatchlings, we're going to take a subset and we're going to look at their crawling performance. So we're basically going to put them down a runway and time how long it takes them. Once they get out to sea, the first 24 hours is the time when they're most likely to get predated. So generally you lose about 50% of the hatchlings in the first 24 hours. So if you're producing hatchlings that are really strong and they can swim away from the shore a lot faster, that's going to increase their chance of survival. So after the hatchlings are done with the performance, obviously we want to give them the best chance of survival possible. Um, so we'll release them back out onto the sand where they'll crawl down to the sea and um, swim their way out into the open ocean. So hopefully if we come back in about 20 to 40 years, we might be seeing some of those hatchlings coming back as mothers, um, which is really the whole purpose of this project. I feel really, really lucky to have Richard as my supervisor. I feel like we've learnt so much and it's really progressed the project forward. It's about having a real life setting to understand the learning that they, that they have in the classroom. It's a really good experience to understand what it is to work in a conservation organisation and to understand what conservation issues are facing sea turtles in this case, but you know, more broadly around the world. From an honest perspective, it's great to see the product of some really hard work. So that's the really exciting part where we get to do a lot of hands-on with the babies. From a personal perspective, um, really amazing to see these endangered sea turtles, watch them go back out to sea. Malaysian sea turtles, they're not from Costa Rica, they're not from Australia. They might migrate there to feed, um, but when they come back to nest, it's gonna be in the area where they were born. So once we do lose them, um, yeah, unfortunately, they're gone. We're not going to be able to get them back. So if we don't change what's currently going on, um, there's a very big chance that those species are going to go extinct, similar to what's happening to the leatherback right now.